Today's Feast of the Ascension celebrates in a liturgical way with songs and readings and prayers what the first Christians affirmed with just these simple words, Jesus is Lord. Now, for us, those words are just kind of a religious model. We see them on bumper stickers and yard signs. But to the first Christians to say, Jesus is Lord, put them in opposition to the Roman Emperor, who claimed lordship over everything. And one could literally lose one's life for saying those words, Jesus is Lord. Now, while Jesus declares in the Gospel that all power in heaven and earth belongs to him, we know that Jesus didn't have any interest in the throne of Caesar. He didn't want to be an earthly king or worldly emperor. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. So then, what kind of a Lord is Jesus? Looking at today's scripture, I see three great truths that are presented to us, helping us understand this different kind of worship. First, we go to the Acts of the Apostles. The author seems to insist on this great truth. One thing he wants us to know, and that is, the resurrection is real. For 40 days, he said, Jesus made himself known, showed himself to his disciples, alive after his suffering and death. St. Leo the Great wrote that it was in those 40 days that the fear of death was taken away. 40 days is a biblical saying, a biblical way of saying, as long as it takes. Now for some of us it might take 40 weeks or 40 years to come to that same conviction that we don't need to be afraid of death. So what could make us free from that fear? What could make us not be afraid to die? Well the answer is love. We do anything for love. Now ironically it's also love that also makes that so difficult because we don't want to lose the people we love. And love is what is often expressed in, in our grief and the pain that we feel when a loved one is taken away from us. And yet we also know that love is everlasting, that love cannot die. Remember Jesus, in ensuring his disciples right before his death, said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And so as people of faith, we express this hope in the resurrection when we talk about those who have died as simply those who have gone before us. We know that where they are going, we will be someday. We'll all be gathered together again. And we proclaim in this Easter season that death cannot overcome love, but rather love is stronger than death, as love is of God. The second truth is proclaimed to us in the reading from St. Paul to the Ephesians, when Jesus shows his power, and he shows it in a different way as he is bringing his new life to us. All that Jesus speaks of in the gospel is for you and me. I can certainly think of and treasure those moments in my own life when I have very personally felt the call, the invitation of Jesus, aware of his love for me, aware that Jesus was inviting me to go with him to be his friend. And not just in the general way that we say God loves everybody, but when I realized that the teaching of Jesus was spoken to me, that his death and resurrection was for me. And that's what makes all the difference, to accept that gift of God, the gift of God's love, very personally. The same Jesus is risen from the dead wants to share that same love with you as well, every one of us real and personal way. It was the Holy Spirit who actually put the desire in your hearts to come here this morning, because we've been longing to be with the Lord, and that is part of God's gift to us. And God, St. Paul says, wants to fill you with every spiritual blessing, every gift of God. Wisdom and knowledge and enlightenment and hope, all those good things are given to you. And all we have to do is receive them and say yes, we want to accept this great gift that Jesus loved for us. And when we encounter Jesus, Jesus opens our eyes a little bit and helps us to realize that once we have met him, nothing really can be the same anymore. His love changes us from good to better. He wants to make us saints. He wants us to be among his most chosen people. 
And it's from this kind of power acting in our lives that we say that Jesus is Lord. The third thing we hear in today's scriptures is third great truth in the gospel. Jesus says that he is with us. He's with us always. The ascension isn't a departure as much as it's a new way of Jesus being available to us. Because Jesus is no longer bound by time and space. Jesus is here. Jesus is here now for us. Jesus is not just someone long ago and far away. Jesus is present to us. But this presence, this gift of Jesus being with us, has a purpose. We are told in the Gospel today that the disciples were invited by Jesus to go up a mountain in Galilee. And maybe it's that same mountain when Jesus invited his disciples to go up with him and he showed them a little bit of his glory. We call it the Transfiguration. At that moment that Jesus showed his glory, he told the disciples wanted to stay there. They wanted to pitch their tents and just remain in that beautiful presence of Jesus' glory always. But Jesus reminds us that with that presence comes ascending. There's a mission. Is it okay to rest a while in the Lord's presence? Well, of course. Can we pause and pray and seek the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Yes, we have to. Is it good to take some time out of our busyness to give thanks and praise to God? Well, of course, that's what Sunday is for. The time is Sunday just for that. But not always. Because when we experience the presence of Jesus, Jesus has something that he wants us to do. He wants us to share his good news, to share his gospel with the world. So today, Jesus says to us, I love you very much. Everything I have is yours. And I give you my power, I give you my truth, I give you my love to go with you, but now I'm sending you out. Will you go where Jesus sent you to go? Will you accept this great commission, this invitation to share the good news, the gospel of the Lord, with everyone that you need this coming week? So Jesus assures us that we don't need to be afraid because he's with us. He's with us, empowering us, strengthening us to carry on his mission. So today we proclaim that Jesus is Lord. We proclaim it not just in these moments of celebration, but we especially proclaim it with our lives, as we love one another with the same depth, and the same joy, and the same power which Jesus has loved us.